Peace y'all, I am ICC and today I have 10 tips and tricks for the Titan II. I compiled a list of things I think will help users and I also contacted the developer to see if he wanted to add anything to what I had so far. Long story short, here is what we came up with. And keep in mind, they are in no particular order. So here we go. The Titan II automatically reads the controllers and button layouts, so you don't need to configure the buttons anymore. You may want to customize the layout, which you can still do, and that's even easier than ever. This is better than any competitor or even the Titan I. Some people may want to say what about the Brook Super Converter, but the Titan II allows a lot more than just crossover gaming. You don't need the power supply on the Titan II. It is optional. You can cross over game or you can run scripts with just the power from the USB. The power supply is recommended in three situations. Number one, if you run a Bluetooth connection between the controller and the Titan II as well as the Titan II and the console. Number two, XIM4 users. And number three, when powering the Titan II using very long micro USB cables. The Titan II is a full standalone device. It doesn't require a PC for any operations or functions. As opposed to the Titan I, which requires a PC connection and plugins for some features such as Combo Magic, Game Record, and Max Aim DI. It works with 8-bit DU controllers, including the RB864. For now, it only works in wired mode, but Bluetooth is on the roadmap. You can expect it to work wirelessly as well. These controllers are good for retro gaming, and combining them with the Titan II is a win-win. It works with the Raspberry Pi. A few quick change to the settings and you can be up and running. Then you have all the benefits of the Titan II right on your Raspberry Pi with RetroPi. The memory slots can be changed using the controller by holding the left or right bumpers and pressing the system button. This is a nice little function and actually would allow the user to make multiple scripts for a single game flip through the scripts with just the tap of a button. A very good addition. The Titan II works with wired headsets through the controller. Unlike the Titan I and Cronus Max, you do not need an external sound card. Although you can still use one, it does work without it. It also works with other type of controller accessories such as chat pads. The Titan II supports up to seven input devices connected at the same time. Two from the front USB ports, two from the back USB ports, two Bluetooth input devices, and one virtual HID device using G-Tuner. Macros and combos can be created at a one millisecond precision, and the Titan II can run macros that can be over 24 days long. That is a very long time. I don't know how many people will use all of it, but in this case, having more is a lot better than having less. You can authenticate controllers in multiple ways. For example, unlike the Titan I, you can cross over game and not worry about any 10 minute timer or for it asking to authenticate. Method A, the two USB slots help authenticate because you can use any controller you want in input A, and then match the controller in input B to the console you are using. You could use any controller on any supported console and not have to worry about a thing. Method B, 
If the user stores a valid RSA key on the micro SD card, the Titan II can run without any interruptions at all. I cannot supply you with any key, as that is illegal, but this method does work. Anyways, I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace.